The trucks are heavier, you said like 8,000 pounds for a battery. Does that mean that you can't haul as much? Your payload is reduced, is that correct? That's correct, which means more trucks to haul the same amount of freight. So you're gonna need more trucks on the road. Does that mean that consumers are gonna have to put up with more trucks on the road as they're driving around, right? There's gonna be more traffic? Certainly. How many more trucks we talk? Yeah, so, so we have uh, members of, our, of ATA who have you know, limited scope operations where it be, they're testing BEVs. And what they found is that they need about a three to two or occasionally two to one ratio of trucks, meaning like for every one, the, the routes and missions that one truck would do in the internal combustion engine, reliability was high, they now have to use two BEVs due to charging downtime, reliability, et cetera. But the, the performance in cold weather is not just it's, unproven, it's proven to be horrible. And I just can't imagine pushing this standard on, on North Dakota. That's right, sir. So the, so the battery degrades in cold conditions up to about a third. So that range I talked about, 180, right. 150 to 330, it's degraded by 30%. Is range fairly important in the trucking industry? Is that uh, if you <laughs> want to talk about range anxiety, we truckers would need therapy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I bet. Yeah. Um, it's worth noting, to your point, if we were to convert the entire U.S. trucking fleet to battery electric, we would need to commandeer global production of lithium for more than seven years. Yeah. That's the scale of the problem we're talking about. And it's not that we can't overcome challenges, but we don't overcome them by pretending they don't exist. We just manifest our own density that way.